This week, Eric DeBay will demonstrate his complete lack of understanding of how magnets work. He is coming. Cover your butt. Help fight the Flat Earth bots by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more weekly content. 200 Proofs Earth is Not a Spinning Ball by Eric Dubay. 106. The so-called South Pole is simply an arbitrary point along the Antarctic ice marked with a red and white barbershop pole topped with a metal ball earth. The ceremonial South Pole is admittedly and provably not the actual South Pole, however, because the actual South Pole could be demonstrably confirmed with the aid of a compass showing north to be 360 degrees around the observer. Since this feat has never been achieved, the model remains pure theory, along with the establishment's excuse that the geomagnetic poles supposedly constantly move around making verifications of their claims impossible. Dubé is doing something rather slimy here. Well, stupid? I don't know which. He is confounding geographic South Pole with magnetic South Pole. The funny thing is, he understands both concepts so poorly that Dubé doesn't even realize that the magnetic South Pole is located at the geographical North Pole. The South Pole that Dubé is talking about is the geographical South Pole. Here, he is kind of correct that the South Pole is arbitrary in so much that the South Pole is a man-made concept. There are reasons why we might want to define the South Pole in the way that we do. For example, saying the South Pole is where the Earth's axis of rotation intersects the Earth's surface is a pretty good definition until you consider the Earth's wobble. Now, that definition is no longer precise, and if there's anything that scientists care about, it's precision. Scientists are open about the shifting poles, not to hide anything, but to be precise. This isn't a fault with science, it's a feature. Science asks for precision. This level of precision isn't even unique to the South Pole. The North Pole suffers from the same problem, yet Dubé doesn't seem to care much about it when it involves the North Pole. He seems to think that the South Pole is unique when it's not. Dubé needs to believe that it's just the South Pole that suffers from the pole moving, since in his model of the Flat Earth, the North Pole is immovable and the center, and it's confirmed by science. The truth is that both poles suffer from the same problem. Both poles are subject to the Earth's wobble and shifting magnetic poles. 107. Ring magnets, of the kind found in loudspeakers, have a central north pole with the opposite south pole actually being all points along the outer circumference. This perfectly demonstrates the magnetism of our flat Earth, whereas the alleged source of magnetism in the ball Earth model is emitted from a hypothetical molten magnetic core in the center of the ball, which they claim conveniently causes both poles to constantly move, thus evading independent verification at their two ceremonial poles. In reality, the deepest drilling operation in history, the Russian Kola Ultra Deep, managed to get only eight miles down. So the entire ball earth model taught in schools showing a crust, outer mantle, inner mantle, outer core, and inner core layers are all purely speculation as we have never penetrated through beyond the crust. Here is another example of debate cramming a lot into a single proof when in other occasions he's willing to pad out the number of proofs by just repeating earlier proofs. There really are three parts to this proof. First, debate gives us a model of the flat earth. Something most flat earthers have been avoiding, since models are testable. Because Dubé gives us a testable model of the flat earth, we're going to test it out. So, according to this model, the flat earth's north magnetic pole is in the center, the same place that the geographical north pole is located. The problem, of course, is that if this were true, compasses would point towards the south, not towards the north. You see, the north end of the compass's needle points to the north due to magnetism. The needle in a compass is magnetized. You might have done this yourself in high school. By simply rubbing a needle on a magnet, you can magnetize the needle. All you need then is a way to allow the needle to freely move. You could make your own compass at home. If you want to ensure which part of the needle is which magnetic pole, you could place it next to a magnet of known polarities, or you could simply verify the way the needle is pointing. The part of the needle that is pointing north is the north magnetic pole, since opposite poles attract. What does this all mean? Well, it means that if the north magnetic pole of the needle is pointing north, then it is pointing towards the south magnetic pole, 
the opposite of what Dubé describes in his model. And this is why flat earthers no longer use testable models. Using a model that can be tested means that people will test the model. Unfortunately for Dubé and others, this means that their model doesn't hold up compared to reality. Before we go on to the next part of this proof, keep in mind this model presented by Dubé. We'll be using it again in the next proof. Next, Dubé says, this perfectly demonstrates the magnetism over flat earth, whereas the alleged source of magnetism in the ball earth model is admitted from the hypothetical molten magnetic core in the center of the ball, which they claim conveniently causes both poles to constantly move, thus evading independent verification at their two ceremonial poles. Surprisingly, this is just a repeat of proof 106, so we have a section of the proof that's a repeat of a previous proof. Also, nobody claims that the Earth's molten core is magnetic. That's just an outright lie. Lastly, there is this lovely insight. In reality, the deepest drilling operation in history, the Russian Kola Ultra Deep, managed to get 8 miles down. So, the entire ball Earth model taught in schools showing a crust, outer mantle, inner mantle, outer core, and inner core layers are all purely speculations as we have never penetrated through beyond the crust. For some reason, Dubé believes that the only way to verify the existence of something is through direct observation. This isn't too surprising considering that he believes the Earth is flat. The thing is, we have other ways of knowing what the core of the Earth is made of without needing to look at it. The way that we know part of the core is solid and part of the core is liquid is by using seismic activity. Waves travel at different speeds through different mediums, and they change speeds when they change mediums. When it comes to seismic waves, there are two kinds of waves to keep in mind, primary and secondary waves. P waves can go through anything. So if you have a station monitoring seismic activity in one part of the world, they can check what kind of seismic activity other parts of the world got and compare them. What lets us know that the Earth's core is partly liquid is the way that S waves behave. S waves can only travel through solids. If you have seismic activity in one part of the world, other parts of the world should be able to measure activity as well, except that they can't. There is a dead zone where waves are not detected. What this tells us is that the S waves hit a liquid as they travel through the Earth. Not just do we know that S waves hit a liquid, we also know where. By looking at what areas of the globe can measure seismic activity and what parts can't, we can determine how far below the surface the liquid part of the Earth's core is. This is kind of like an ultrasound for the Earth. By measuring waves, we can see what's inside without digging. Dubé would likely have you believe that you can't know the sex of an unborn baby unless you see its genitals, ignoring that there are ways to see without being able to see. Now, all of this is extremely simplified, and if you would like to learn more about how we know what the Earth's core is made up, I have some links in the description where you can learn more. 108. The Mariner's Compass is an impossible and nonsensical instrument for use on a ball Earth. It simultaneously points north and south over a flat surface, yet claims to be pinpointing two constantly moving geomagnetic poles at opposite ends of a spinning sphere originating from a hypothetical molten metal core. If compass needles were actually drawn to the north pole of a globe, the opposing south needle would actually be pointing up and off into outer space. Okay, this one took me a bit to figure out what Dubé meant by the compass needing to point off into space. It was confusing because Dubé doesn't seem to understand how magnets work. Okay, let's place a person on the equator with a compass. That compass will point towards the north pole, and it will create a line that is perpendicular to the tangent of the surface of the Earth. But, according to Debay, the compass should point to the North Pole, creating a line that is 45 degrees to the tangent. Now, the south part of the needle is pointing towards space. So, this is what Debay expects to happen, and he's complaining that it doesn't occur. Like many other times that Debay makes predictions as to how things should work on the globe Earth, Debay completely fails to understand the very model he is trying to debunk. You see, compasses don't point towards the North Pole. Compasses align themselves with the Earth's magnetic field. You can see this phenomenon by placing compasses around a bar magnet. You'll notice that the needles never point directly to the poles, but instead align themselves with the magnetic field produced by the magnet. If we superimpose the Earth's magnetic field, you'll see quickly why the compass needle doesn't need to point at space. 
What is better than Dubay's misunderstanding is that he fails to apply this kind of thinking to his own model. Remember this picture? If we use Dubay's idea as to how magnets should behave, then if we were to take a compass somewhere on the northern hemisphere, then the south portion of the needle would point directly to the ground since it's all the north magnetic pole. The same thing would be true in the southern hemisphere, except the north needle would be pointing to the ground. Dubay puts so little thought into his proof that his own debunk debunks his own model. Proof 109 is the same as 106. Again, Dubay seems to think that somehow the south magnetic pole of the Earth is unique, even though it suffers from the same fluctuations as the north magnetic pole. Well, we made it through four more. Next time, we'll be looking at circumnavigating the Earth and visiting some very old repeat proofs.